put a fresh big bite on. That's one thing about swim baits. You can adjust the speed of the bait so I can fish it shallow as well as slow roll it into deeper water. That's one thing that's really true about swim baits and why I think they've be, become so popular. I think I'm gonna get a bite right now. Oop. Oh, got him? Yeah. Kind of called that one, didn't you? Yeah. Largemouth bass are unquestionably one of the most sought after American sport fish. In fact, there are an estimated 30 million bass anglers in North America and counting. In recent years, the most dramatic growth in bass fishing has been driven by high school and collegiate bass fishing teams. Tactics and techniques across the country range from big and bold to extreme finesse and everything in between. One critical aspect of successful bass fishing is lure selection. The best lure choice is often associated with the cover the fish are using and their mood on any given day. Weeds are a favorite habitat for largemouth bass. And in a lot of clear water lakes of the North Country, they can grow as deep as 20 feet of water. Crankbaits are great lures to comb vast acres of weeds very fast and efficiently. Now let's join James Linder and Dan Quinn with some unique insights on rip cranking weeds for midsummer large. Love the water. That's a hot school of bass, no question about it. Look at that. Holy cow! I think we found them. Yeah, that's cool. Look at that. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. Well, I can tell you one thing, we really got the right conditions for crankbait fishing today. <laughs> today I'm fishing with Dan Quinn, uh, Pro Staff Manager for Rapala Baits. You know, crankbaits are sort of a, a unique lure because they catch so many different fish throughout the course of the season, from ice up to ice up, for every different species of fish imaginable, from salmon, trout, walleyes, muskies, northern pike, you name it, crankbaits catch them. You know, what's really sort of intriguing to me, Rapley, you guys make a, such a wide variety of different baits that work throughout the course of the season. We truly do, and what's cool is just regionally, seasonally, whether it's salmon and Alaska in the Northwest or bass in the Ozarks, a wiggle wars, you know, the beta choice. Yeah. A shad wrap, wintertime largemouth and bass in the South, amazing walleye bait. Well, the walleye, I was going to say, it's the best walleye bait, uh, crankbait ever, ma ever made. Right. What, what yeah. we're, we're going to do is actually, we're going to be for really focusing on uh, talking about catching uh, largemouth bass fishing weeds with crankbaits, but we're going to talk on a lot of other topics associated to crankbaits that will help you catch more fish this season. Oop, there's one, wow. Mr. Right. Quinn, maybe we got the school of our buddies right over here. Right to the left of the Purdue. pole. Right to the left of the pole. Okay. Hey man, buddy. There's a leap and leaner for you. It's one thing when you get in these spots like this, a lot of times you get on the right weed edge and boy, you'll catch a lot of them in short order. Yeah. You know what I mean? Once he's, we're in midsummer right now, and the fish are really sort of can really be schooled up in these weed edges, Boy. but they are moving around That's a lot. That's what you want them to eat it. Look at that. Holy That's cow. This bait is so key for just you know the ability to comb a lot of water. Just another bite. Oh, I got a careful grab in this guy, actually. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, wow. that's what you're looking for. That's not just a bass, that's a pig. That's not just a snook, that's a donkey. That's not just a smallie, that's a toad, dude. Introducing Suffolk's Advanced Fluorocarbon. It's not just another fluoro, it's a whole new category of fluorocarbon. Hello, future. 
Want to learn how to catch more and bigger fish? Well, we've got the place for you. Introducing the Fish Head Video Library. Now you can enjoy hour after hour of educational videos right on your phone, tablet, laptop, desktop, or even stream videos right to your TV. Largemouth, smallmouth, walleye, catfish, muskie, pike and panfish, open water, or on the ice. Check out Fish Head TV to rent, buy, or become a Fish Head member today. Tired of doing this? Again. Get a can of this and spend more time doing this. Marine Pro Fuel Treatment helps marine engines start easier, run smoother, and last longer. Seafoam! Marine Pro, new from the makers of Seafoam. Marine Pro is a complete marine fuel system treatment. Just pour it in. Fast starts and smooth running power have never been this easy. Ask for Marine Pro wherever marine products are sold. This segment is brought to you by Blackfish Outdoor Apparel because you can't choose the weather. Just tick the, tick the top of some grass and bam. Just a classic, classic bite. Oop. Oh, you, oh, oh, wait, oh, there he is. Boy, he just, he just plowed it. Right on the tip. Yep, there is a good one. Come nice here, buddy. Fish. There's a little bit better one there. Come here, buddy. Boy, he was one of the ones, he, he snuck up, I, you know, I took, tore it off the weeds and started reeling, and he came straight in back of the bait, the bait picked it off, and all of a sudden I just lost total contact with the bait. He just drilled it. Come here, buddy. There's a little bit better one. Come here, buddy. Come on. Give me a moment. Perfectly perched in the snout. Boy, he really meant business. It's one thing that these things are such great search tools to find fish, you know what I mean? And it's, it's not only, you know, like we're just fishing deep weed edges, but, you know, it's all different levels based on the, the bill is the really key, you know, bill selection and the lure selection based on the habitat you happen to be fishing. We'll get her back in the drink. Summertime fishing in the Midwest or on grass, you get really <laughs> setting your ways with jigs and, and Texas rigs, Tokyo rigs, soft plastics and Nico rigs and worms and Sometimes you're fishing along, not getting bit, and then you get a bite on your retrieve into the boat, you know, when you're reeling up. Huh. And then it happens again. And it happens twice. You got to take those clues, start throwing crankbaits, swim bait something horizontal up off the bottom. And a lot of times when I see that happening, it's when you'll occasionally see some blue, a bird flies by and the bluegills erupt. You think, oh, the bait's really high. So the fish, they take notice of that. You know, they've got to eat to survive and they, when the conditions change, the bait changes, you got to adapt and, and go with the flow and switch to a crankbait and start catching them. It's, it's cool when it happens and you kind of put all that together and put the pieces of the puzzle together and it works. You know, one really important aspect of crankbait fishing is, believe it or not, boat control. Uh, we've been really fishing the perimeter of a deep weed edge. It's like 10 to 12 foot of water and casting these DT10s up along as well as along the uh, sort of uh, paralleling the edge of the, we the weeds. But what's really important about this is actually based on the, uh, your actual individual baits. As you go to get into deeper water, when you get to say 14 foot baits, 16 foot baits, 20 foot baits, generally the more refined cast you hit, you're not moving around really quickly, you're set up in a fixed position. The spot lock feature like on this mid coat is a fabulous tool for that because a lot of times what you do is identify some hard bottom strip of rocks, a ledge, a shell bed, and you have coordinates on there and then you're making really long casts, driving the bait down there and getting that bait to walk for as long a period of time as possible with these baits. That's a real key. With shallower lip baits like wiggle warts and you know BX brats when you're running six foot and shallower you don't have that issue because you're just uh, you know using the bait as a tremendous bait to comb a lot of water really really quickly but it's just more talking specifically about your style of boat control to present the bait is really key. Dan you get a chance to fish with a lot of the pros around the country what are some of their interesting things that you've seen about their uh, talking about color selection in crankbaits? Yeah you know it is fairly interesting in the sense that a lot of them keep it very simple. In, in really clear water, they're gonna typically try to 
use colors that are natural, pretty subtle. And then you get into dirty water and then typically a lot of guys are gonna go bright and obnoxious so they can see it. Or, or ultimately it's more of a solid color. You know, and ultimately another really big factor to color selection is how pressured the fish are. If the fish are highly pressured, color can be a much bigger deal than if they're not pressured. Um, a lot of the reservoirs down south get an unbelievable amount of pressure and minor changes and subtle, subtle changes in baits, but overall hues are what really seem to get those guys that consistently win tournaments, they're catching more fish in the same spots with baits that just have slightly different hues. I think ultimately with colors, you, each guy, each angler is going to have some of their own just personal preferences that you start with, you know, this kind of water quality color, you, you start with this and you go from there. But one thing I've found that really helps me change colors and experiment with color to see if there's a different difference from a chartreuse to a natural or whatever is use a snap. It's really simple, it's easy, then you don't have to re, you know, kind of retie all the time. It's, it, it keeps you fishing more often and I'm more inclined to change colors, experiment, try other colors with a snap. Kind of a simple little addition, just makes life easier. Nice watch. Same bet? Same bet. Same bet, huh? Like many of you, I've had back issues. From the pounding waves of Lake Erie. To over 30 years of competitive angling. And a lifetime on the water, but not anymore. Smooth moves change the game. It's a must have for me and my clients. It's like my boat is floating on air. They're easy to install. Fully adjustable. It makes a day on the water a whole lot more comfortable. Smooth your ride with smooth moves. For the ultimate fishing experience that won't break your budget, Lund delivers the new 1650 Angler. Featuring large casting platforms, plenty of storage for gear, lockable rod storage, and a spacious live well. Choose from three different layouts, including a full windshield for added protection, a side console for added space, or even the classic tiller for ultimate boat control. The affordable Lund 1650 Angler is perfect to fish those backwater honey holes and tough enough for big water. What lies beneath can no longer hide. New Mega Imaging Plus uses high frequency sonar to show you fish and structure up to 200 feet below your boat and 200 feet out to either side. No more secrets, no more guesswork, just a clearer picture of the world below, down to a fish's species and direction. Because more detail means more of this. Only from Humminbird. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. Right where you're casting, there's a bass out there. A couple of them. Yeah? Yeah. Like three o'clock right out here. Three o'clock at uh, about 30 feet out. Oh, there's one. Oh, oh. good one. Ah, uh, feels like a pretty good one. He's gonna leap. Oh there yeah. Oh, there you go. Right. Oh, <laughs> that's what we're looking. He's for. He was way out on the end of the cast. It was really interesting. You know, I, I bet you that was one of those fish. I actually got this uh, Mega 360 going, and that's what I told you. There's a bunch of fish out here at three three o'clock, and I think this is one of our buddies that were out out there. Come here, come here. Oh, come here. Oh, oh, and I got his other one. Do ya? <laughs> Look at that, that's a fatty there. Look at that. Real pretty one. Oh, there's a school of them, James. What? Oh yeah, there's more right there. I was gonna say, <laughs> is that intriguing? That's just unbelievable. Wait, they're schooled up like that's small just mouth. unbelievable. Look at that. Look at that beautiful bass, man. That's a tank and a half right there. 
Look at that, we'll get her back in the water. As Mr. Quinn was saying, he's got some buddies down here that are looking for more and more crankbaits <laughs> to bite on. <laughs> yeah, they're liking the DT-10. Heck yeah. That's the fun thing about summertime cranking. I mean, when they when you find them on an outside weed line, there's often there's a pile of them. Yeah. And they're they're eating. Oop, oh, there's another one. Oh, yeah. There we go. Wow. Come here, buddy. Look at that. Look at that guy. We got him sort of running him like a in the back of the skull. Come here, buddy. Somebody's been nibbling on him. This <laughs> is Mr. Northern Pike. Okay. Lockup mode here. It's sort of interesting though, with the spot we're on here, it's actually like a tip of a point, then it goes into an inside corner. And there's another one. Oh gosh, I missed him. Oh. Oh, <laughs> and it seems like, you know, these fish are moving around on these spots. You know, and just because you catch them on this spot doesn't mean they're gonna be there the next day. You know, a lot of times they're roving around, they're pushing around the bait fish and they're following. They're like grazing on the bluegills that are living in these weed beds. Whoa, <laughs> that, boy, <laughs> that boy got my attention. <laughs> They're but, feeding on DTs right yeah. now. <laughs> Look at that, this is another big one, yeah. But the, where the fish are pushed up, like as I was saying, there's a, like a great big, whoa, oh. bummer. Wow. There's a great big inside corner here, and the fish are uh, um, really, seem like they're piled up in the corner right now. Oh, Mr. Quinn, that was unfortunate. That was a big one. I know, I, I realize that. That's an aggravation. Ooh. I may have to do the tighten down on my drag here. Well, one more chunk. We'll see how this this works. I just had one knock it sideways. And Did I? They're a I'm casting a little bit too far out. They're right in there. As you can see here, just watch this right in here. And you can see these are actually fish that are in this weed bed. You can see the weeds. This is directly below the boat. And then I have a bigger, thicker clumps of weeds out to my right. At three o'clock, the boat is pointing forward. I'm in a spot lock position, but you'll notice actually how when you sit in and watch and I get on points, a lot of times I actually see the fish moving around me. I'll see the bluegills moving amongst the weed, weed clumps. And not only that, you'll see bass in a given situations. Just a little while ago, I had a whole pack of them like right at the three o'clock zone. And that's where Dan and I had that last little series of fish there but it's a really interesting technology this type of you know new sonar technology is really changing the face of fishing today one of the key differences about fishing a crankbait in the grass is is the whole general idea about around a crankbait that changes in direction are what triggers the bite so if you're fishing a dt6 or a square bill around the bank as that bait's creaming around banging off docks and rocks and wood it changes direction when it hits something and that's when that's what triggers the bite makes the fish bite the lure so as you're fishing around grass it's coming along and it gets, ticks the weeds ticks the weeds maybe it gets stuck in the weeds you want to you want to be able to reel it dig it down there and then snap and as soon as it bolts out of there it pauses for a second before you start reeling again that's what triggers a lot of those bites so keeping in mind that you always want the bait to be doing something different stop and go you know, speed it up, slow it down, do different things to make the bait change direction because you're not hitting hard cover like you would with a lot of other presentations and a lot of other crankbait situations. You know, bass fishing is really super presentation specific associated to rod, reel, and line based on whatever presentation you happen to be fishing. And this is really true about crank crankbait fishing, probably more so than it, a lot of other techniques and a lot of the hardcore bass guys would have to say that uh, glass or composite glass rods are the best rods for cranking. I'm fishing with a Mojo Glass St. Croix 7.4. This is a Magnum crankbait rod with a medium heavy uh, moderate action rod and it, it's, it actually has a little uh, num number of really interesting attributes. One, number one, it's relatively soft action, but then it loads up as you can see about one third 
back so it gives you the power once the fish bite on the bait, bait. But you want that glass rod for a lot of times for any type of like moving baits like this is because the fish come up and they hit the in bait. They hit the bait and a lot of times you'll have it with a really sensitive graphite rod, you'll pull the bait out of the fish's mouth. And what you want to do is have the fish come up and as the bait's moving along, they can actually close down on it. Then not only that, is once you load up on the fish, keep her tight and keep the fish pinned to land the fish. This is a D Daiwa 6.3 to 1 Tatula SV TW. And then the line on here is really important. That's a uh, fluorocarbon. This happens to be 14 pound test uh, suffix, uh, advanced fluorocarbon. One thing nice about that, it's got a little bit of stretch, but it's one of the biggest things for crankbait fishing. It's super abrasion resistance. In a lot of different cranking situations, you're ripping through rocks, bouncing over wood, weeds and stuff. And that's, that's really key about that. But it's, it's a com combination of the rod, reel and line that's really efficient for this type of cranking. And for me, it's kind of nice Rapala baits or hand tuned tank tested. Take them out of the package, tie them on, fish with them. But as you fish crankbaits around hard bottom, especially rocks, they're grinding the bottom, you dull your hooks. Around grass, they'll stay sharp a lot longer. But when they do get dull, or say you wanna put bigger hooks, this hook is awesome. This is the hybrid treble. It's a 1X hook, and it has a little bit of a curve in. So when you get a hook in the fish, they're coming aboard. And that's kind of a nice feature. And one thing like, like now when this school it was fired up, to get them refired up, we bought this hook with a blade on it, the bladed hybrid treble. And sometimes, I've seen it actually many times, where you tie one of those on, throw back in there, and it'll get them fired up like they've never seen a bait before. So I think I ought to try that right now. Oh, oh boy, I, I, <laughs> did you see that one? <laughs> no, I stopped oh, it. I, that uh, one just... Wow, there you go, holy mackerel. <laughs> He grabbed this out of the water. water it, I, it was out of the this water. This is a big one right here. If this is this is a bass, this is a big one right here, I think. Yeah. Oh, he's just a toughie. He's a herd of toughies. Look at that guy. Wow. Well, that's what cranking's about, I tell you that much. <laughs> We've got a whole pack of them. They're snapping all over the place. Come here, buddy. Look at that guy. I thought this guy was a lot bigger the way I had him hooked underneath the uh, gill plate like, like that. He had him sort of locked up. What? Well, there you go. Look at that. Yeah. He grabbed it out of the air. Uh, uh, yeah. That's a first for yeah. me. Is that a cr cranking sort of freewheeling? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, Holy smokes. Well, that goes to show you the effectiveness of crankbaits. Yeah. Mr. Quinn catches them actually not d really deep diving, just free flowing <laughs> uh, a foot above the water. That's a hot school of bass, no question about it. Look at Holy that. Holy cow, I think that's, we found him. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Look at that. Dang. Yeah. Come here. I wonder he's, he, he, I think we got, we might have a herd of buddies down there. I'm here again with my nephew, Dan, and uh, we've worked together for many years on many different projects. Uh, he's one of the owners of Linder Media Productions and uh, as a business owner, and I've been personally a, a business owner, small businesses all, all our life in the media business, and uh, uh, work with a lot, a lot of different people, a lot of personalities, and, yeah. <laughs> and a lot of creative people uh, where emotions can, can get yeah. into a business decision. Sure. A lot of things that sometimes cause uh, strife and, and gossip, and these things always lead to division and problems. Yeah. You shared something with me I found. I had a similar circumstance, but yeah. you're set it all, really. Oh yeah, a good friend of mine was working at this place and they had, a, it was very diverse, a lot of women, a lot of men, different ages and all that stuff. And there was a lot of strife going on, infighting inside the company. And one day uh, he told me that his boss sat everybody down and he said, I planted a leave it tree. I'm like, what is a leave it tree? I thought this was so cool. So out, outside in front of the office, there's a tree. He said, if you got any garbage, junk, strife, any of that stuff, I don't want it inside the building. So when you walk in that door, you leave it right there and you can come in. If you don't, you don't have to come in. You know what I mean? It was that simple. He had enough of it and he said, you wanna, you wanna leave that junk, leave it outside when you come inside this door. And I thought that that was profound, a leave it tree, as simple as, just leave it at the door, man. It is profound. Yeah. Uh, being, a, again, in business my whole life, I've dealt with 
similar situations. Yeah. And uh, where, where strife and gossip can really, really cause problems. God's Word has a lot to say of, of, about the vision and how bad it is and how to handle it. And I just want to read you one quick scripture that deals with strife. And there is quite a bit of them, quite a few of them. The beginning of strife is like releasing water. Therefore, stop contention before a quarrel starts. Sometimes, in some situations, you have to address the problem by sitting down talking to the person. And if they are not on the same page as the corporate directive goes, sometimes the best thing you could do is part your ways. It's better for them and it's better for the business. And those are some of the hard, cold facts of life that we deal with in today's world. Whether it's in business, in our families, in a house, in a church, strife is not a good thing. Hey, from all of us here at the edge, have a good, safe fishing season. We'll see you on the water. I love that one, yeah, Dan. Start your own leaving <laughs> tree. And if you really like what you see, we got a whole lot more. So check us out at any one of these online outlets.